Hi, my name is John from Japanese Knife Imports, and today we're here to talk about carbon steel knives in your kitchen. A large number of the knives that we sell here are carbon steel, especially a lot of the hand forged ones or traditional single bevel knives. And carbon steel knives can require a little extra care and maintenance than their stainless partners. Uh, part of the reason is that carbon steel can be reactive when you're cutting acidic foods. It can also rust if you leave it wet or dirty for any period of time. Uh, sometimes it'd be a short period of time, sometimes it may be a long period of time, and it will depend on the steel and the heat treatment uh, as to how your knife will react, and of course, what you've been cutting with your knife. Uh, so, uh, we're gonna begin this video by showing you how you can work with the carbon steel knives in your kitchen uh, in a workflow that will help you maintain a, a good, clean knife without having any kind of reactivity issues with your food, or at least minimizing the reactivity issues with your food, and preventing your knife from rusting. And so today, I'm actually gonna be using a semi-stainless knife uh, as a demonstration, but we won't be cutting any food, so it will be okay. This is the Geshin Heiji 210 millimeter uh, Wasuji Hiki. And you can see here, I have my cutting board laid out in front of me. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a damp towel. Uh, this towel is not damp, but for the purposes of this video, I hope you guys can imagine that. Uh, if you are right-handed, you're going to take the damp towel and you're gonna place it in the lower right-hand corner of your board. If you are left-handed, you're going to take it and place it in the lower left-hand corner of your board. This towel is gonna to be used for a couple of things and we'll get to them in a second. The next thing that you wanna do is make sure that you have a clean, dry towel. And you're gonna place that either at the top of your board or on you. Now you can have it either you know, tucked into your apron or in a pocket nearby that it's easily accessible. So this is gonna be the way that we set up our workstation when we are working with carbon steel knives. However, you can also do the same thing with stainless steel knives and it's better for your knife and it's better for the cleanliness of your work environment. So, we're gonna start cutting some food. And so we pick up our knife and we start cutting away at stuff. Let's say we're cutting onions. When you cut onions with a carbon steel knife and you don't take care of this kind of thing, uh, they can turn black or they can taste or smell like metal. And especially if you don't clean off your knife from time to time. So we're gonna use the damp towel. We're gonna make a couple of cuts and we're gonna come over here with the damp towel and we're gonna wipe off both sides of our knife, and then we're gonna go back to cutting. And you can do this periodically. And the purpose of this is to reduce the acidic buildup on the side of the knife, uh, and also keep your knife clean. By reducing the acidic buildup, we can control the level of reactivity that we have when we're cutting acidic items. And of course, keeping your knife clean is a little bit more sanitary. In addition to those two things, the moisture on the blade from using this damp towel will help reduce friction in your cutting. And so it helps actually make cutting a little bit easier. Uh, you'll often see sushi chefs uh, using damp towels on their knives or dipping the tip in water and, uh, and going like this to make sure that the water runs down the edge and it helps them do their cutting when they're cutting, for example, sushi rolls with nori uh, or fish in general. It's a very helpful thing to have. When you are done cutting, you're going to use the damp towel to wipe off your blade. You're going to take the dry towel. You're going to dry off your blade and put it down. You're never leaving your knife wet or dirty. When you leave your knife wet or dirty, chances are it's going to rust. And even if it doesn't, or it's a stainless steel knife, it's not particularly good for your knife, and it's definitely not good for the sanitary conditions in your kitchen to leave stuff wet and dirty. So, uh, again, wiping it clean with a damp towel, wiping it dry with the dry towel, and putting it down, and then walk away if you have to go get something or do something else, or you're done with that kind of thing. The nice thing about having the damp towel right near you is that once you're done cutting whatever you're cutting, you've taken it off your cutting board, you have a damp towel to sit there and wipe up your board and keep everything clean around you. So in general, it just ends up working out to be a much more sanitary, clean way to work. So, over time you may notice with your carbon knives they build up what's called a patina. And patina is a safe form of oxidization. Rust is also a form of oxidization, but it's harmful to your knife. A patina sets in uh, as you start to use your knife over time. And you'll see it either become like a dull gray or blue or purple, and it will depend on the steel and what you're cutting with it and so on and so forth. Some people even force patinas on their knife by using vinegar or mustard and letting it sit on the knife for a while and wiping it off and cleaning it. But they build naturally as you cut food with your knife. And in the US, it's kind of a popular thing to allow patinas to build, and uh, some people get very excited about creating really cool looking patinas. However, in Japan, you rarely see patinas on the knives, and in professional kitchens, well, specifically in professional kitchens, uh, most people think of it as, as kind of dirty. Now, it's not exactly dirty, but I can see how people think that. And so instead, what Japanese chefs do is they polish their knife every day. And they do that by either using uh, some non-bleached powdered cleanser and a slice of daikon and rubbing it on the knife every day to keep it clean, or they use uh, rust erasers like these here. 
uh, which you can actually buy from us here at Japanese Knife Imports. It's not on our website, but you can email or call us and we have them available. And that way they can keep their knife patina free and very shiny and clean at all times. In home kitchens in Japan, you will see knives with patina uh, and it's, it's much more common, uh, but the, the mentality is still there and it just is that people in home kitchens either aren't as educated about their knives or don't care as much because it's not being seen by so many people. Um, if you choose to have a patina, understand that you're gonna have to pay attention to it and you're gonna have to notice if there is rust forming because it still can happen uh, and try and keep that stuff clean. In addition, every time you sharpen your knife, the area that you sharpen will remove the patina from that area. So there will still be some reactivity issues, uh, but the patina does greatly reduce the reactivity of your blade. Personally, uh, I don't keep my knives with patina. I keep them clean uh, and it's part of, I guess, the habits that I picked up while cooking in Japan. Um, but I, I would hope that from this, at least you can understand uh, why or why you would not want a patina. Uh, again, it's a lot of personal preference issue, but the main point is that you're taking care and keeping your knife clean. If you find that your knife does have rust on it, you're gonna have to clean it off. And there are a few ways you can do that. Again, the rust erasers will work very well for this. Uh, you can also use things like Barkeeper's Friend, uh, which has a kind of acid in it that helps eat away at the rust and keep your knife clean, but it also forces a patina on your knife. Uh, or you can use any kind of uh, light abrasive. You don't wanna use anything crazy heavy because uh, it will cause really deep scratching your knife and, and rust erasers can cause scratching. So it's very important when you use them, you go in one direction as opposed to in circles or in various directions. Um, you wanna remove rust as quickly as possible so it doesn't start to eat away at your blade and cause pitting. Uh, pitting is very difficult to deal with and, and can actually cause serious damage to your knife. Uh, you also wanna make sure that you're keeping uh, track of rust specifically near the tang area, uh, which can be a weak point. And it's a reason that a number of uh, blacksmiths actually forge the tang area a little bit thicker. So when you're storing your knife for extended periods of time, uh, you may actually want to oil it uh, to keep it from rusting. And you can use camellia oil, uh, tabaki oil. Uh, and we have one here that is a spray bottle. We also have a little applicator uh, that I like to use personally. And what it is, is it's a refillable thing. It twists apart at the middle but it has a felt kind of tip up here and you can just rub that on your blade. And so what you'll do when you're storing your knife is you'll rub it with a light coating of oil uh, and then you can put it away and the oil will help prevent it from getting moisture on the surface and keep it from rusting. Now this isn't something that you need to do every day if you're using your knife on a consistent basis because uh, then it's, you, know, you have to clean it every time that you start to cook something or cut something. Uh, but it is something that I highly recommend if you're gonna be storing your knife for any extended period of time. But the, the most important thing you can do is work clean with your knives. Understand that if you're gonna cut something highly acidic, you're gonna wanna make sure that you wipe off your knife more often. Uh, and so this kind of setup with the damp towel and the dry towel is very helpful for that. Uh, it may also be useful for many people uh, when you're cutting a lot of highly acidic food to just use a stainless knife instead. It can make your life a little bit easier. Uh, however, it's not always an option. And as, as I mentioned before, a number of the uh, traditional single bevel knives in Japan are carbon steel, in fact, uh, I can think of only very few that are stainless steel and it's like Suisin's Inox Honyaki series, which is a great series. Uh, they also have a Ginsanko series uh, and as do a number of other makers. Um, however, the way that they sharpen and the kind of edge feel that you get from them is different from the carbon steel knives. Uh, anyways, I hope this has been a helpful video with regard to the, the care and maintenance of carbon steel knives and, uh, and also the understanding of patinas and when they may be good and when they may be bad. Um, as always, if you have any questions, you can find us at JapaneseKnifeImports.com. Again, my name is John. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.